Hi, pet lovers. Thank you for joining Gina's grooming channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a shave down, a complete full body shave down on a standard poodle, a phantom standard poodle. Hi, Des. You want to come up here? Good boy. Thank you, baby. Okay, so a few points I want to discuss about doing shave downs. Shave downs are not for every single breed, not for every dog. Typically, it's done for dogs that get haircuts. Um, so dogs that their hair is undetermined length, such as poodles and poodle mixes. Um, so make sure that you are aware that if you're going to be doing uh, any kind of a shave down, on a pet, especially a double-coated breed, their coat might not recover. So you only wanna do this on dogs who can recover from getting a shave down unless it's medically needed. The other thing I wanna talk about is shaving blades. There are certain blades that are uh, created for shaving and considered the proper shaving blades in grooming. Let's go through, there's really four that we're gonna talk about that we really use all over the body to have a shave. Those blades going from the longest to the shortest start with the four F. So the four finishing blade, that is our longest shave. Then we go up to the five. Then we have the seven, which is our most uh, usual, right? So if you're shaving down, especially if a dog is matted, you're usually gonna be looking at a seven. And then the shortest of our shaving blades is the 10. So just be aware that if you're going shorter than a 10, that is gonna irritate the skin. Uh, a 10 is already pretty severe. We wanna usually keep our shaves in the five to seven range. Uh, that actually gives a little bit of hair left on the body and make sure that the coat isn't irritated. Now, Des over here is not matted. Uh, we are shaving him down because of owner request. Uh, he is more of a ranch dog. So as the weather is warming up, we keep him short uh, so he is maintained, so he doesn't pick up all of the stuff uh, that he would working on a ranch and kind of the outside. So I wanted to take you guys through I, um, the full shave. I'm gonna full body shave, including the tail. Right, buddy? I'm gonna leave a little bit of personality on his face and his head, although I will make it tighter and shorter. But let's take you through all the steps to go ahead and do a full body shave on a standard poodle. All right, buddy, you wanna turn around? You gotta go this way. There we go, good boy, good boy. Okay, now there's a question always whether or not to shave before the bath or not to shave before the bath. Um, now, the answer to that is really you do what you have to do. I'm gonna shave Des before the bath because actually he's not very dirty. He is not matted, um, but I wanna make sure that I don't spend all that time drying that coat that I don't need to. So I'm gonna take off all this coat now, the concern about pre-shaving before the bath is that you're going to be using your clipper blades and your equipment on greasier hair, on dirtier hair. So make sure that you know that if you are doing pre-clipping before the bath on dirty hair, you're going to have to maintain your equipment a little better. All right, guys, I'm going to equip my number seven. I'm going to show you how I start this. We're going to go through this, do some zoom ups. Yeah, and get all this coat off of Desmond. Good boy. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the occiput. That's what we normally start at. Now, I wanna talk to you guys, if a dog is matted, sometimes you have to get a little bit of an edge in with your blade, and I'm gonna demonstrate how um, you do that. Um, but with him not being matted, it's gonna be a little easier just if you are starting to shave your dog and your blade isn't going through, don't give up yet. Hopefully it's a good blade. There is a possibility that you have a bad blade. So check another blade and see. But I'm gonna be putting on a seven, equipping my Clipper with that. Thank you. All right. Good job. Thank you so much. And so also important to have before you're doing shave downs, a few things. You wanna have a cooling spray. You wanna keep checking this blade because this can get really hot, especially we're doing a big job. I guarantee you I'm gonna be having to switch out this blade quite a few times to get through this entire body. So coolant spray is something that you will spray directly on the blade. Okay, and then wipe it off and that will cool down the blade so you're not putting a hot blade on a dog. And in addition to coolant spray, uh, I also have a lot of sets of number sevens because that's what I'm gonna be doing uh, the cut with. So I've got three blades of number sevens. I have others also in reserve, but I'm gonna use three for this whole process. That way I don't have to spray so much. I can leave one blade cooling right while I'm using one of the other two blades and kind of rotate through there uh, so that everything is nice and cool for the pets because we're gonna be going right to the skin. 
And before I start at the occiput, just a note of caution, if there are moles, bumps, any skin tags, you can get them caught in this. So be very careful. I'm also gonna be showing you guys different directions in certain sensitive parts of the dog while you're shaving them. Um, so we wanna make sure that we go the right direction. So I'm gonna stop at those moments discuss that with you, make sure that it's really, really clear. And so that you, when you're shaving down your dog, you do that very, very safely. All right, guys, I'm gonna position myself behind the dog. The occiput is that bone at the top of the head. That's usually where most ha haircuts begin. When you're shaving down a dog, it's a good place to start. But if you've got mats, like, like I discussed, you might have to find an in. So I'm gonna kind of emulate what that looks like. So when you're going in, if you're not getting a cut, right, and you know you have a good blade, make sure you kind of just go in different directions in that area, gently, right, keeping that skin tight until you get an in, and now you can shave in rows. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is gonna set my pattern. I'm gonna go down his back. I'm gonna go down his body. I'm gonna go down his back leg on this side. I'm gonna go to his front leg and chest. And I'm gonna do the same thing when I turn him around on the other side. If you notice, I'm always holding my other arm, kind of pulling the skin. That's very important. You wanna keep the skin in front of the shaving area, nice and tight. This is gonna prevent any skin from getting caught, it's also going to give it a better shave. Hi, Bob. Does that tickle? Good boy. Okay. Now we're going to go down. The direction in which you do the body, okay, you want to kind of follow the lay of the coat normally. With poodles, they kind of poof up, but we do want to do kind of a gentle little arc going underneath. Now, I, this is a good time to check that blade. It's not really hot, but hot enough where I'm going to change it out. Um, so I'm going to go through. I'm not going to spray because I want to avoid spraying as much as I can. Stay where we are, baby just so that there aren't chemicals flying around the air for me and for him uh, to breathe in. So the more I can keep it natural and just rotate through the blades, the better. Good boy. Now, because this is a pre-shave, I can be a little dirty about it, right? I don't have to be super, super thorough. I, I do like to get as much as I can on the pre-clip phase. It makes it a lot easier, but I will be going over all of these lines once he is washed and dried. Lifting up the foot, that just kind of helps get everything around. Good boy. Checking for the heat, I'm gonna switch out my blade. I like to keep a trash can right next to my table when I'm doing shave down so I can kind of just plop all that hair next to me. Uh, kind of keep that area clear because if once that hair starts building up, it's kind of hard to see where you are. Uh, so keeping a nice tidy little work area helps. I'm going to turn him around a little bit so you can see his rear end because I want to show you the direction that I'm going to be using inside his legs. 
And I told you I'm gonna be shaving down his tail, so we'll do that together too. But I'm gonna move his tail over so you can see that as I'm going in the inside of his legs, I'm changing the direction. I'm not going this way, I'm going toward the inside. That is because he's got some tendons. There's a tendon right here that we never wanna go straight across, especially for small dogs. Just a good habit to pick up to go in this kind of a di direction, down and in, to get any of the work done inside the thigh. Okay, good boy. Okay, and since we're back here, let me go and just take the tail. For smaller dogs, be really careful because tails can be really thin. Uh, for bigger tails, you just want to support them. Good boy. Again, this is just a nice, dirty way to get this coat off. Make sure your clipper blade is cool, especially working on sensitive areas. Okay, and what I'm going to do is lift up his tail and go up. And then get the edges. Good boy. I'm going to give them a proper sanitary afterwards, so I'm not going to worry too much. Again, trying to just to get the majority of the coat off so that the wash won't take so long. All right, moving on to the front leg on this side and the chest. And when I'm shaving up to the throat, I want to show you guys, it's going to be all the way, basically, this is the occiput, right? I'm going to shave all the way up to here, all the way to basically that line of his face. And that means all the way up to the throat, right here. So we're going to be shaving there. Here we have a lot of loose skin, so I'm going to show you directions on how to deal with that. I want to talk to you guys about and I passed this by without talking about it, is this is the tuck up uh, and it reminded me when I got to the armpits there are directions that we're going to be using anytime we have any kind of a flap if you guys need to visualize what a flap looks like you can look at basically the flap of between your thumb and your index finger and where could this possibly catch skin so every time you think about that think about this thumb and forefinger and understand that if your clipper goes this way it cannot catch skin if your clipper goes this way, it can catch skin. So you want to go against any flaps. Come here, baby. And then when we're dealing with the armpits, I usually use a safer blade like a 10. It's a shorter blade. It's a little safer with the teeth being a little smaller. Um, and I will scoop out the armpits like that. All right, baby. Let's keep going. Just saving the armpit for a different blade, but I'm going to go all the way up. To the throat, but when I'm getting to these little flaps, I'm kind of going to go side to side. And I don't want to apply too much pressure. Because you can absolutely catch loose skin with a blade if you put too much pressure and you're not careful and you go in the wrong direction. Time for blade change. Is we are gonna take them around, and, but I'm gonna start with the front leg and finish the chest on that side. Come on, boo-boo. 
Good boy. All right. You lift this up for him. Okay, so pattern is going to be from the occiput right up here. Okay, and then we're going to be coming down. I'm going to do the front leg, go through the body, kind of what I did on the other side, down the back leg, and then I'm going to chuck the butt from this side. Checking that my blade is nice and cool, ready to go. Okay. Good boy, Desi. Good boy, Des Des. Good boy. Okay, I know. Let me get the inside a little bit. There we go. Good boy. Almost done, sweetie. Almost done. Okay. Checking the blade. Replacing. I don't know. Okay, good boy, Desi. Good boy, Desi.
right guys, basic pre-clip done. It's not pretty. So when he's all washed and blow dried, I'm gonna go through all those lines again with the number seven, lifting up that hair, making sure we get any little bits that are sticking out. So I will meet you guys back here when we're ready to do that. All right guys, we are back. Uh, we have washed Desmond. We have dried Desmond, and right now we'll do a close-up. He's all patchy. We got a lot of that hair out. I'm really glad that I did that pre-shave because his bath and his dry didn't take super long. But now we have to go through all these lines. Everything that was lifted up by that blower, when we blew it, we're going to go through those lines. And I also want to show you that I'm going to keep a slicker brush handy. So when I'm going through lines, I'm also going to be lifting up that coat. Just make sure your slicker brush is a soft slicker brush because we just shaved him down, right? So there's not much fur protecting him and make sure that you're gentle, but you're using this to uh, pop up that hair that we want to uh, make sure that we clip her down. So uh, you'll be seeing me doing a lot of brushing back. Okay, and then I'm going to show you what we're going to do with the feet and uh, as our final step for the body. All right, guys, let's get that seven on that clipper and pretty much follow the same exact lines that we did when we took off all the coat, now we're just looking to fine tune it. How you doing, bud? All right, guys. Well, I took the um, armpits. It's armpits with the 10, but I still see I need to make some fine tuning. So I'm going to do this now while I'm kind of in this area. I'm going to go through, make sure that the armpits are taken down nice and clean. Let's get the other one. I just want to mention that because I'm not going to use my 7 for the armpits. That's a little dangerous. Uh, so uh, you can look at our channel to know a little bit more about armpits. But just know, go in the right direction so that you can't cut uh, the flimsy, like floppy hair of the armpit. Um, but again, and don't use like a number seven or number five in that area. It's a little easy to catch that skin. All right, bud, you ready to turn around? Let's do the other side and finish you up. Good boy. Good boy. Okay, here we go. Turn around, turn, turn around. Okay. Good boy. Now, guys, I am not going to be fat shaming Des, but he does have these rolls right here. Um, that's just the way it is. When I'm working on that area, just want to remind you guys, you got to pull those taut or else it's going to get caught, let's say, in a roll um, or someplace that, you know, is kind of creasing. So just make sure if you have any creases, you want to pull that skin taut, especially for that final pass, because this is where everything needs to look really, really nice, uniform and sharp.
looking a lot smoother with that brush back. I'm making sure that nothing is sticking out. We don't miss any little strands. I'm going to turn him around uh, so that we can just kind of look at his rear end. Oh, la, 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 la. Good boy. Make sure that we got that all nice. And then we're going to go into our scissor work. All right, guys, looking sleeker, looking smoother. We're getting there. What I'm going to do is use my forest dryer, blow all the hair off of him, and then we're going to take out our scissors. And I do have to tell you guys that you're not going to be able to get a professional finish without some scissor work. And we're going to, I'm going to fit, focus my scissor work on is going to be little detail work, like the tip of the tail that looks a little ratty here, around all the feet, edging around the feet, making sure in between the toes is an excess hair. Basically, the lines where hair can be sticking out. I'm going to look at those armpits. I'm going to look at that tuck up, make sure all those lines are really nice and tight. And that's what's going to give you that professional shave down look. Well, all right, guys, that is it. I'm actually really happy to take this opportunity to show you that even a short, sleek look may be a great option, especially if you have a sporty dog or a dog that is on a ranch or who can get dirty very often, especially when you have a single-coated dog where you can choose whether you want to go long or short depending on your lifestyle and your pet's lifestyle. Also want to finish that we made sure that his face is really nice and cute so we didn't take any character away from him even though he has this beautiful, solid, sleek body now uh, that's going to take him through the hotter months. Guys, thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much for clicking that thumbs up if this is a video that you like. If you have any questions or comments, please put them down below. We are listening. Uh, we really appreciate your time, and we will see you soon. Say bye, Des. Bye. <laughs>